Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another quick Tinkercad lesson. So let's get cracking. Friends, I'm on my website, hlmodtech.com. I love to highlight all the amazing lessons I have to offer. Friends, I also have a sweet built-in messaging tool where you can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Now I'm highlighting it. Now I am highlighting that today because a user reached out and said, hey, can you make pen blanks for acrylic pens? I've got a strategy. Let me show you how. Friends, we're going to start this design in a shared project. So Robert reached out and asked, how do we make these pen blank boxes? He had gotten this far where he's got his measurements, but he didn't know how to add the other pieces. After a couple of messages, I explained how to use the collaborate button where you can generate a link, copy the link, and share it with somebody so that you can work in the project together. I also showed the note tool where I could click and leave some notes. And then Robert asked me how the heck this worked as well. So friends, I'm gonna real quickly teach you all those things. Step one, friends, is to visit tinkercad.com. Once you get there, I sign in with Google. After that, click plus and we're going to make a 3d design let's start over here with naming it it's going to be pen blanks if you want to add the word acrylic that makes it nicer later if you're searching for your designs now we need a box and i am going to cheat if we type soft we can find the soft box this thing is wicked cool we're going to use it twice the first thing we're going to do is change y to 120 we're going to keep the X and Z and we're going to make the walls one and we're going to make the outer radius zero. Once the outer radius is set is good. Now we do need a bottom piece. We're going to bring that. Once again, these measurements are fine except for the height. We're going to change that to one and the length. We need to make 120 and press enter. If I do a line, we can choose middle and we can make it to the end. And if we group those, we've just made our box. It's that easy. Now the next step is to add shapes inside. So the first one I saw was a line shape. So I am just going to bring out a cube. I'm gonna change it to one millimeter thick. I'm gonna bring it around, I'm gonna rotate it. If you stay inside, notice they snap to 22 and a half degrees. If you come outside, you can go one degree at a time. Once you've got it turned, you can drag it where you want. You can also use the arrow keys. You can set your nudge to 0.1 so you can be more precise. I'm going to tell you that it doesn't matter if you have it stick out because I'm going to show you a trick in a minute to cut it. Now, if we want to stretch it further this way, doesn't work. Control Z is undo. What you need to do is work plane. And then when you attach it, then it stretches the right way. Once again, I'm going to tell you, don't worry about the little bit hanging off. We're going to fix that. W is work plane. Click to set it down. I'm going to make another one of these by doing control D. You can nudge it however you want. Once again, if you put the work plane on it, you can shrink it super easy to the exact design you want. Just as soon as you're done, make sure you put the work plane down so you can drag it where you want. I'm going to do shift select so I have the two of those. I'm going to do control D and then I could nudge little bits. I could set it back to size one so it nudges a little faster. Friends, you can also do shift nudge as well. Here's another fun trick. You can mirror it. So I am using the exact same design, but since I put it in two spots, it looks different. I can do control D on this one. I can change the rotation just a little bit, nudge it where I want, get it exactly how I think it looks cool. Bang, that snaps into place. You can have as much fun as you want messing with that, trying to get it to look exactly the way you want. Now, friends, I mentioned that we're going to trim it. Watch this. Go back to the soft box. When you type soft, it'll come out. Now, we're going to use this to cut it off. So we're going to set it as a whole. We're going to do zero. We're going to make Y 126. And we're going to make X 26. And then watch this. Shift select. So I've got those two pieces. I'm going to choose a line. I'm going to choose the yellow one. I want it to be middle. And then I always recommend looking at a corner 
and I want it to be middle. Look at that, it trims right to the edges. So now if we select it all in group, you have got your perfectly shaped design with nothing poking out. We can do it a little trickier. Watch this. We are gonna ungroup. I am gonna change the wall to 3.1. So notice it'll go in just a little bit further. And now I'm gonna hide the yellow piece because I know it was fine and we'll just trim the parts. Bingo. Here is your show wall to bring everything else back. Check it out. They fit perfectly inside your design. How cool is that? The nice thing about that technique is I can reuse this box. So I'm going to do Control D, Shift Nudge to move it across. Friends, let's try another style. Make sure you're on your basic shapes. Let's go down and find the heart. When you bring out the heart, you can see it's quite huge. We're going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to tell you the size we want to get down to is seven. We're going to use a real cool technique to space these out. I want you to switch to your five millimeter nudge. Now click Control D to duplicate and do one nudge forward, two nudges forward. Don't touch anything else and just do Control D again and it'll go all the way to the end of your shape. If you count these real quick, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. That's pretty groovy. I want you to select those and I want you to make them a group. Now, what we did there was made them so we can align them. If we click over here and do a line, make the box the master, we can choose center and center. Remember, if you click on the corner of the cube, it makes these three dots make a lot more sense. Now, if we look back at our shape, you can see it's right there. We do want to raise it up, so I'm going to hit work plane, which is the letter W. And if we click on the hearts and hit D to drop, they will now be raised up. All right, friends, so we're going to put hearts on all four sides, and we're going to put a block in the middle to hold them up. Let's bring out the block. We've still got our five by five nudge. So I want you to just hold down shift and we're gonna shrink it until it's size five. Now it needs to stretch all the way across. So we need to make this 120. Or if you wanna make sure it's inside, you can do 118. And then we can do shift select. So I've got the yellow and the red, choose a line. And I want it to be in the middle this way. I want it to be in the middle this way. And then once again, let's check that corner so you can easily see there's the in the middle that way. Now that we've got that part, we're going to hit T for transparent so we can see through the shape. And that lets us find the right height for this. Even better, let's hide this so we can look underneath. And now we can raise this to the right height. We need to shut off our five millimeter nudge so that we can go one millimeter at a time. If you make a mistake, just do control Z. I wanted this one right here. And you can see that that does not quite connect at six. So we're gonna try 6.5. That does connect. Now friends, we're gonna move it to the other side. So I'm gonna do control D, work plane with the letter W, set it on top. And if we take that and do D for drop, we have got our hearts on both sides. Make sure you click the red one so we cancel out what we just did. Now click on your bottom heart, hold shift, click your top heart. If we do control D, it makes a copy and we can rotate it by staying inside the circle 90 degrees and you've just created hearts. They are connected all the way around and if we do show all, bingo, they are in the box. I'm going to put the work plane back down on the ground and that is another fun template in just a couple quick steps. How cool is that? Alrighty friends, so I am going to wrap up this tutorial right here for now. We've got two different styles that you can work with. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments about what you think of the styles and if it's your first time and if it's your first time using Tinkercad, I'm hoping that you're having a blast with it. Now, if you've got one that you think is perfect and ready for printing, simply grab it all. Notice it tells me there's six shapes there, so we know we got it all. And then you hit export, and we need to export as an STL. 
Notice my browser, I'm using Chrome, ask where I wanna save it. That is a setting that I've chose over in settings for it to always ask. That helps me a ton when I'm only exporting part of a project. And this one would be called Pen Blank Hearts. Now I'm ready to bring that into my 3D printer and print it. Now friends, I wanna send a huge shout out to Robert. He reached out, which absolutely makes my day, asked me the project and I learned a ton about acrylic pen blanks. There will be more videos, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. And of course, if you've got more ideas, add them in the comments down below. Friends, of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Now, don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.